So JB, thanks very much for taking the time to, to speak to us about Veg Plotters software. Just tell us a bit about some of the features that are on there. What what does it do? Yeah, so the, the first thing is, um, and the thing that you can do for free, um, you just have to log into an account, is just the, the layout planner. And that's the thing that first caught me. So I've only been using it for about a month. But um, I was in the process of kind of converting my allotment to raised beds. And so it was really handy to just go down with the tape measure, plug all of the all of the data into veg plotter, create my beds, create my beds, and then uh, then I could go away and work out all the wood measurements that I needed. And I could it's really easy to just kind of edit the beds with a little bit of dragging. And it's quite nice to to just see the layout of your plot kind of come to life. But yeah, the first that's the first thing is just kind of the layout planning. You can put in all, all kinds of things like uh, structures, polytunnels, greenhouses, sheds, compost bins, that kind of stuff is all built into the into the software. You can do custom raised bed shapes as well, which is quite nice. It doesn't all have to be square. And I've got a few funky shaped beds in weird places. So that's quite good. And then the the kind of the second part, the main part, which is the the part that you have to subscribe to the, the package for is actually the planting planning. And it's really powerful. Um, I've only just started to get to grips with that because I've mostly been using it just for the for the layout planning while I've been doing my raised beds and that kind of stuff. But the actual planting planning is is really powerful. It's based on a, a month by month system. So this time of year is the perfect time to kind of get started because most mostly, unless you're a very advanced grower, you're not going to have too much out on the veg plot. So you you kind of start in January and you just it's got a little list that is based on your own local zone your own growing zone of things that you can plant now you just click a little button and it goes here are the things that you can plant now you can either direct sow them or start them in little trans uh, in little modules to transplant on later and then you can just go through each month you can start in january then you can see what it's got for you in february and march and onwards and it's it's really cool so that's a real kind of bonus you think that you can set it to local conditions in your area yeah, that's just automatically built in. So um, when you go into, uh, there's a little section for that has all the information on the vegetables, you know, the crops and things that you can plant. And there's a little, you can see a little timeline on there and it shows you, you know, where where the, the conditions are matched to. So mine, I'm on the South Coast, so it's quite a nice, nice growing zone. And it just says, yeah, this is based on based on your zone. You can plant this out in in March or direct so in March and it'll be ready to harvest in in kind of June July it's really cool but it's it's uniquely customized for for you like that so has it helped with your allotment and your growing yeah massively so if you if you see any of my YouTube channels I'm, a, I'm quite a chaotic gardener um you know I've got a very busy life a very busy full-time job um YouTube is just a little thing on the side and I'm a forgetful guy you know like, it can be quite chaotic so actually putting some time in this time of year to to plan it all out and there's a really nice feature as well that they've added recently called the my jobs page which basically if you plan it all out at the start of the year then you can go into the my jobs little page and it says oh it's march it's time for you to get sowing your salads or your spring cabbages or you know you can go into april and it'll say it's time to start your tomatoes that kind of thing so the drag and drop element of it is a real kind of selling feature that makes it easy and simple to use. Uh, in terms of other kind of features, what's the sort of the benefit do you think to you? Is it because you can carry on using the software, the app, when you're away from the allotment? Yeah, that is a big that is a big part. It works quite well on mobile. It's probably best if you've got a tablet because some of the stuff can be quite big. Um, but it does work quite well on mobile and I was using it for all of those little measurements, you know, when I was planning out the beds and that kind of thing. And one of the best things about just having the layout there is all you've got to do is like log into the website. It's right there. And you can, for me, I, I, like I say, quite a forgetful guy, quite chaotic. We were looking at things like arches the other day and it's really easy. Like when you've got a, an arch web, like a web page open with a product of an arch and you look at it and it's like, this is 80 centimeters wide and you're I cannot remember how big my beds are. I just load up veg plotter now and it's really easy to see. Oh yeah, you've got 60 centimeter paths between this bed. You've got 80, 80 centimeters there because, you know, it's a bit of a funny space. Um, so it just being quite portable and not on the website is is really nice. Gives you a visual representation of what yeah. that length looks like. Exactly. Yeah. Seeing the, seeing the plot kind of come to life on the page was quite a big thing for me. I really enjoyed just putting in the layout, to be honest, and just <laughs> seeing the beds kind of 
come to life. It's quite nice. Had you used any kind of digital software before to plan and map yeah, your actually, allotment? That's a really good question. So when I when I first got the plot, it was like head high bramble, and that you know it was just absolute chaos. So I kind of had a blank canvas to make all the shapes and designs and whatever that I wanted. And I just used Excel. You know, I just like colored in cells on Excel and it was really horrible, <laughs> to be honest. And the thing about doing that is it's very difficult to edit because you break everything down into like, you know, maybe each cell is 20 centimeters if you're being quite detailed. It's just you can't just drag and drop shapes or anything like that. You know, on veg plotter, you literally just go, oh, that bed's a bit bigger or I want to make it a bit smaller to put in another bed or something like that. You just drag it. It's, it's so much easier. But yeah, I used Excel, um, you know. Paper doesn't really work for me. I'm not very good at doing scale diagrams. <laughs> like doing technical diagrams is absolutely um, not one of my fortes. <laughs> and there's a, there's definitely a few others that I'd kind of tried and bounced off. And this is the first one that I tried and was like, oh yeah, I'm actually going to keep using this. This is quite good. Do you think it would be simple and easy for someone who isn't perhaps as technically adept as perhaps yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm quite a, you know, I've got a YouTube channel. I spend a lot of time doing like quite techie stuff. Got all the cameras, all the audio stuff. But most of my audience aren't like that. They're allotmenters. They're retired. And quite a few people have said, this is really good. Positive feedback. So that's good. But for me, for me, I think it is quite easy to use as a beginner. They've got a veg plotter, have a YouTube channel with um, really like concise tutorials as well. You can kind of pick it up in about 15 minutes across all their different videos. Nice little tutorial playlist. Um so it's pretty simple. You just you do have to take a little bit of time to get used to it and and remember to kind of start your plan at the right time of year. Because I kind of went in on mine in September. I started trying to plan where my onions were going to go and <laughs> that kind of thing. And it it thought I was trying to plant my onions in in September, November. Um, so just so long as you're aware of the the months, <laughs> make sure you're in the right month. And it couldn't really be easier once you've got it kind of under your under your skin. You know, under once you understand the language of it, it's brilliant, brilliant. Because actually you could set up 12 different plans, couldn't you, in that yes. free version, one for each month of the year? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can actually set out the different layout plans and you can also have multiple plots. So if you've got two allotment plots, which are in completely different parts of your site, or you know, you've got two different bits of your garden that are separated, they don't have to be on the same plan, but it's all still kind of synced. You know, So you can go on the My Jobs page. And it will show you all the jobs for all your different plots. It's not just one at a time. Or you can just toggle it so it's one at a time. Um, and yeah, it's 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 very handy. It's very easy to use for sure. What's your favorite vegetable to grow? Oh, chili peppers. <laughs> and uh, don't don't get don't get me started because we'll be here for hours. I've got the the grow light on behind me, and it's it's just my chili peppers that I've started there. Fantastic. Thanks. So you're just rearing some seedlings in indoors yeah 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 first of january every year that's when i try and start my peppers either actually on the fifth a little bit slow but yeah if i can first of january that's that's it that's the start of the season for me fantastic and just tell us a bit about your allotments because i think you got involved with allotments in 2020 is that right yeah yeah um like many people actually it was um start of lockdown um and that's when i did my Started up my YouTube channel. We took on the plot kind of really late 2019 in the middle of winter, which is oh, the best time, absolute best time. And like I say, it was head high brambles, um, a shed that's that was falling down and is still falling down because four, four years later, I've not replaced it. But I do I do now have two greenhouses on there. I've got a um, a 20 foot long poly tunnel. Uh, it's just fantastic it's like my happy place you know um my friend tony he always says it's like when you walk into your allotment there's like a release valve and all the stress just kind of goes tss, and just releases and I, I definitely feel that way about my plot it's a it's a work in progress it's really rough around the edges um i try not to spend much money on it <laughs> it's slowly improving year on year and uh this year i've just put in raised beds so it's just it's just starting to actually look quite nice if I do say so myself <laughs> starting to look a little less scruffy still a little bit <laughs> what do you plan to grow in the raised beds then oh uh, yeah so the um the I've, I've kind of got two two um two plots and the second plot is proper traditional raised beds where I've actually done like a structure I'm building up the material um just because there's very very low amount of soil in there so pretty much 
everything I planted just hit the there's like a clay pan so the first plot which was the original plot that's more of just like a, a pretty raised beds you know they're not actually going to build be built up too much but it's all the traditional stuff I don't do, I don't go too exotic or anything first bed I like to have my salad patch I like to have a brassica I've got loads of brassicas on the go purple spring broccoli does really well for me that's a good favorite it's not so good with the cabbages but I, I think I get a few um I'm really excited as well for um uh, green beans you know they're like one of my favorite favorite crops i'm going to do loads and loads of green beans this year as well it's always good isn't it to grow something that is fresh and you get a real difference in taste to something you, you can't purchase in the supermarket yeah yeah you can't beat it tomatoes are the the one that everyone says and it's true it's true you know there's nothing like a, a tomato fresh from your greenhouse or your polytunnel so uh, i've got a raised bed in the in the polytunnel as well that i'm just kind of building and i'm trying a hotbed as well this year you know where you get the the manure kind of cooking so you can start some some really early sowings kind of mid to late feb hopefully i probably should have got it done already but you know real life gets in the way doesn't it <laughs> it does doesn't it and you, it, you know in some in some cases like you know take spring flowering bulbs well you know you probably won't get the kind of the the best looking flowers but hey just get them in the ground anytime really you know in the sort of the winter period and that's going to be better than letting them rot away in a shed or something isn't it you know so. exactly exactly mm. yes definitely exactly well thank you very much for your time jb just tell us a bit about your youtube channel where can people see it yeah so you can find me just on naturally jb on youtube i'm on instagram as well at naturally jb um like i say it's just me swinging a camera around showing what i'm up to at my allotment i do the occasional kind of how-to or guide video i've just done one on a nice little sweet pea frame that i've done in the back garden and i've started a, a guide on chili growing as well so if you want to start some chili seeds you can find me on youtube brilliant stuff thanks very much thank you thanks a lot